tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Hi everyone, hello. They're like, hello, Marika. Yeah. So I'm excited for this afternoon because something that I can relate and learn from a coach. But again, but again, you have to brush up on your English. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I think I bought a lot of vocabulary. <laughs> all, right, all right. So let's call on him, okay? A very good friend of mine, someone I really respect. Please welcome the Thailand national coach for basketball, Coach Chris Daleos, Newsflash, KNO's basketball. Yeah. Oh, even better. Okay, so I can get knocked out by baby dynamite and I can take Thea to the game. So I'm doing okay. That's correct. <laughs> I played basketball during my university days. And now I play okay. netball. <laughs> right. What's no, netball? Not... Well oh, done. It's... <laughs> it's sort of basketball in a way. What is that, where you kick the ball into the, into the, into the thing? Uh, hey, yeah. No, it's actually like basketball, but the difference is we don't dribble the ball and then we don't have backboard. Our wing doesn't have backboard, backboard. And it's a women's sport. It's well known in Commonwealth uh, countries like Australia, England, and also Singapore. So yeah, it's it's not really a new sport, but it's new sport here in the Philippines. I'm okay. not sure. Hey, wait, Thailand also have uh, netball. How are you? How are things on your end? I'm sure, well, I keep on asking this on you. But right now, we're really needing the FIFA Asia Pop qualifiers. How, how are things are going on preparations for Thailand? There is no preparations. Uh, the country's on lockdown. There's been no, I have been had, I've been here two and a half months. I haven't had a single practice yet. So there's, there's nothing. There are no preparations, no nothing. We play Korea, which is the 30th ranked team in the world. And we play Indonesia. Is kind of our one of our rivals, and thus far, you mentioned GM that you're in lockdown, so there's no nothing of uh, no kind any kind of training happening, not even online. Nothing, no, nothing. Now, I guess the players are supposed to do things on their own, but I, you know, I haven't, you know, whatever they're doing on their own is what they're doing on their own, so you know, uh, I haven't really talked to them about. Well, I mean, I sent him some clips of some film. Uh, I say how things are going. After that, I, I don't know. Until okay, the but, government gives a word that it's okay to yeah. start practice, we're not doing anything. I don't want to sap your mood, but <laughs> I'm going to ask you another question. So how do you have fun in the lockdown, Coach Chris? I don't have fun. <laughs> this is the crowd. This is a frown. I'm not having fun. This has been a, I don't want to be a negative guy, but you know, to sit here every day, as I talk to Brian, every day I just sit in my room and wait for this lockdown to end. And right now it's going on two months. So, you know. How's that for you, Coach Chris, hosting? How do you find that? Hosting instead of coaching? I, I enjoy, you know, interacting and talking to people who have a passion about basketball. So, I mean, you could do this. This is, you know, you, you just sit around and talk basketball. I, you can, I can do this all day, especially with good people, you know. Henry, no. But the rest of you guys, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, coach, we're glad coach. to hear that, Coach. No <laughs> name dropping, Coach. I'm just joking. He name dropped. <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah. Was there ever a time that the players didn't really got to familiarize, familiarize with the court and the, the ring, the shots won't just go in? Uh, was there ever a time? I think she paused. Okay. Well, also, okay. I, I didn't get the question, Brian. Oh, sorry. What's the question? Um, was there, was yeah. there a time that the team or the players had a hard time shooting with the court or having problems with the venue, like the court was slippery or what? No, was there you know what? I, you know, I don't really, we don't really talk about stuff like that because the court is yeah. the court. You have to, you have to play. You know, you can't yeah. make changes on it. You can't make excuses for your play. Uh, oh. So we just, it's just like a business. So we go in there with a business mindset. We have to come here to take care of our business. And uh, actually we play, we play pretty well against Korea. We changed our defenses up. Uh, we did some things that took them uh, by surprise. 
we played very competitively with Korea. We didn't get the win, but we played very competitively with them. So uh, all that comes into play. The biggest thing with Korea was, you know, just everybody was walking around in, in, in masks and all these, you know, uniforms because of the COVID situation. That was the craziest thing. You know, temperature checks for you in. People were in like space suits, you know, all around the yeah. court. That was the most, that was the craziest thing about Korea. I have a follow up to that. Uh, was the yeah. shooting um, that game, was this the game before uh, before Korea? Was this How game? is Coach Chris as a coach? Are you strict, or do you transform into another person when you are um, in practice and certain games? <sighs> well, you know, I've about I've been at coaching for a long time, thirty years, and you kind of evolve as you go along. You know, and some teams need a little more pushing than other teams. Some teams need a little more vocal than others, I, but I've come to the point in my career where we just drill the things that we want to do. And I feel as long as we defensively stop teams in defensive transition, rotate well in the half court set, and do the rotations that we're supposed to do, we can pretty much play with anybody for the most part, you know. And then offensively, you know, we value our possessions and. Uh, and we run our things in transition, offensive transition, I think is very important. But I, I just think right now, I just try to prepare my club as best I possibly can. And, you know, players got to go out and play, but I have to give them the, the system and the structure in which to do that. I used to be a big time screamer and yeller. I, I'm not a big time screamer and yeller anymore. I've kind of evolved out of that to more of a business. This is a business now. Uh, no friendships. It's show show business, not show friendship. So that that's kind of my approach now when it comes to basketball games and practice too. And practice too. I don't go out with my players. I don't hang with my players. I really don't know much going on in their personal lives too much. I don't get involved like that because at some point I have to pull a guy. I can't let friendships get in the way of the business side of things, and that's winning games and winning championships. That that that's just been my approach. Has there ever been a point in your career when you had uh, closer relationships with your players, and has that gotten uh, in the way of you and uh, I don't know your coaching, uh, you coaching them? You know what? Uh, I have favorite players. I've had favorite players. I still have. You know, here's an example. I have my, my backup point guard here in Thailand. He's not on the national team, but he's on my professional team. He is by far my favorite player. When we played in a championship game, I didn't play him a minute because I just didn't feel he was going to help me get over that hump. But he still is my favorite player and probably my favorite person. But at that point in time, we won the championship and I didn't play him one single minute. So for me, you know, I look at it, this is how I feed, you know, pay my bills, this is how I feed my family. I get, I feel, you should be judged on wins and losses and championships won. I know a lot of times now it's, it's not what you know, it's who you know. That's how these people get all these jobs. But I'm still old school that I believe that your resume should speak for itself to get jobs. And people want to be, people want to be associated with winners. So I can't let feelings with players get involved too much. Uh, I, I just have to, on the court, it's a business. But we have here a video of you and you have a very interesting <laughs> uh, reaction. So uh, let's watch the video. <laughs> Can you tell us more about that, Coach? Was that something, was that rare that players go out at the court early? Why were you so surprised? I'm, I, players coming 40 minutes before practice to get work in? What coach wouldn't be gushing in excitement and joy that players are actually coming in early to get work in? You know, versus some players that can just come strolling in two minutes before practice starts and start lacing up their shoes. So I think it is true when that people say, you know, your team will take on, you know, the personality of your coach. I think there is some truth to that. But I always, I always push our players to do extra work, to come in early, to stay late. Keep your mouth shut and work hard. Uh, I think those are pretty much my simple standard rules. And so if you can have a team come in 40 minutes before practice time and put extra work in, that's, to me, that's heaven. So that's heaven. coach, I'm sure 
I ha we have another video. I'm sure this is one moment you will never forget. Forget the 2019 Sea Games. Okay. Can you tell us something about this moment, Coach Chris? Chris, well, would you say this was a milestone? For yeah. You? Well, that's the first time Thailand's won a silver medal in six years. Oh wow! Uh, congratulations, congratulations. <laughs> that moment's that extra special. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you want the people that you're associated with. You want them to achieve a level of success. Well, you know, if somebody, you know, you don't want people to do poorly. You say you want you want success. You want to work hard. When you can achieve a level of success, you it's a proud moment. You know, and and for some of these players to represent their country like that, and to win a silver medal, I think is big. Uh, you know, it was uh, Philippines, then Thailand, then Vietnam. So, uh, you know, that's a. I, I mean, I'm happy for players that came and worked hard and, and 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 did good things. So, you know, in that regard, yeah, it's a proud moment. It's a proud moment for your country to win that silver. So, yeah, absolutely, I'm happy. You know, I'm happy when people I care about win and succeed. You know? I want to know. On your part, what was the most memorable experience you had as a coach for 30 years? What was one and maybe coaching experience that you could have been Uh, you know, I don't know because, you know, I, each, each part of my coaching career has been a chapter. So like when I was a college coach, we went to the Final Four. And I thought, you know, at the time, I'd be like, oh, this is like the greatest thing. I really didn't enjoy it because I knew there were other challenges to come. But looking back, going to the Final Four, you know, as a college head coach, you know, that's huge, right? Some people, that's the highest as they ever get. But I was like, okay, great, let's move on to the next challenge. And then from there, I went to the CBA, which is like the G League, and we went to the championship game there. And uh, I thought, oh, this is the ultimate, you know? I, you know, but no, that ended, and I went on to something else. And then I won a championship, with the champagne swarm in that league, and I'm like, oh, this should be it. But I, I was, I'm always hungry for more. So like here in Thailand, this is the stage I'm in in my life. And uh, my team has won five championships and a silver medal for the national team. And you think like, oh, for some people, this is the best. This is, oh, okay, that's over. Now we go on to the next challenge. And so that, that's my latest thing now. So I don't, you know, it's great for the time, for others, for other coaches. It might be the beat-all, end-all highlight. But for me, I'm ready for the next chapter and then go win in the next chapter. And then have that chapter end and move on to something else for the next chapter. You know, I just, as long as I can keep going and stay on that treadmill, you know, I'm gonna keep on going. I just, and that's, so I can't really pick out one that's number one overall. I just think each chapter, I just wanna be known as the guy who wins, you know? who treats people fairly, and Chris Taylor, we're gonna hire him because he's, he's gonna produce a winning and a winning culture. I hope that's how I'm judged, but that, that's it. Yes, yeah. cool. um, it's, show, it's show business, not show friendship. <laughs> it is. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.